The meeting uh, that I'm helping to co-organize on the uh, innate immune response and the pathogenesis of uh, infection um, is a fundamental meeting to hold in Brazil because Brazil has a lot of infection and a lot of uh, immunologists working on innate immune responses and the immune response to infection. And this has actually been a history um, of research in Brazil where um, a lot of young researchers have come and trained uh, with very eminent scientists in the US and in the UK actually at our institute uh, with Alan Scher, with Bob Kaufman, they've had many, many uh, Brazilian uh, immunologists working with them who'd worked on infectious disease. So there's a big link there. And in fact, uh, one of the co-organizers, Ricardo Gazzinelli, was actually um, in Alan Scher's lab many years ago. And he's now a leading uh, immunology of infectious disease researcher in Brazil. Uh, so two Brazilians are organizing a meeting and Alan Scher and I were asked to help co-organize uh, from a few different angles. One, that we would be able to help advise them uh, to get the meeting according to the Keystone philosophy, uh, but also with the view of being in South America and keeping those diseases and the Brazilian and other South American community uh, as part of the meeting. And we, I think we've done this. Um, and the other aspect was because Alan and I, um, one of us is in the UK, Europe, the other one is in the US, and we basically have a breadth of people that we interact with and know and know our work. Um, this will also help to encourage uh, people to go to this uh, uh, meeting in Brazil uh, from Europe and from the US and other countries. But I think there'll be a huge um, attendance from South America itself and probably from Central America and, and actually North America. I think it's covering a breadth of infectious disease. Uh, parasites that are uh, uh, endemic in the country, but there's also tuberculosis, viruses, um, and various, various types of infectious disease, and also some basic um, uh, immunology and the innate immune response. So I think it'll be, it'll be good. It'll be a good Keystone me meeting in a great setting. I think Keystone Symposia are unique in their uh, breadth across the biomedical research, research community, but also in their multidisciplinarity, bringing together uh, different fields and actually bringing aspects of one field into another, uh, also bringing joint meetings uh, where there are joint sessions that uh, one field can really influence the other. Um, I think the Keystone Symposia also have been great with respect to young people encouraging their participation at many levels, at meetings as late breakers, short talks from the abstracts, and also in the workshops. Um, and the poster sessions at Keystone, are, at Keystone meetings are also very, very good and encourage interaction between the young people, the young researchers, and the faculty. And this is just um, really a unique aspect of Keystone and Keystone caring about these aspects and about possibly also the underrepresented people, um, not women not just because this is the law, but because they really care, and also underrepresented minorities from different countries who may have then the opportunity to interact um, and bring their research to, to um, a, a meeting like Keystone, which are the best. Keystone conferences have had a great influence in my career. Um, I f attended my first Keystone meeting in the late 80s. It was a B-cell meeting in Taos, New Mexico. I'll never forget that. And I was really impressed with the program. It was just um, mind-boggling. I mean, it was just amazing. Um, and then... Um, as the years went by and I got my own independent research group, I was then lucky to be invited to give uh, my first symposium talks um, at a couple of Keystone meetings. And I remember being very nervous um, at my first one um, with this incredibly high faculty and high level faculty. But I was young, starting my career off, so that just shows Keystone um, for what its reputation is about. 
Um, and then obviously my career must have continued to progress in the right direction because in the late 90s and then early 2000s, um, I was invited by Ralph Steinman, the late Ralph Steinman, um, to run a keystone meeting on dendritic cells uh, with himself and Jacques Bonchereau. And that was actually uh, an amazing learning experience. Ralph Steinman, who, as you know, uh, received the Nobel Prize, um, sadly, two days um, after he died uh, this year, um, was a mentor to the whole field of immunology. But where Keystone meetings were concerned, uh, he was just great. And so we, I think the short late break breaking talks were from the abstracts were introduced to the Keystone meetings by Ralph Steinman, and he conveyed that to us. We would uh, each read, uh, we'd have teleconferences to discuss the program in great depth and really go back and forth a few times until we got it right. Um, and then when it came to the abstracts coming, uh, Ralph read everyone, Jacques read everyone, I read everyone, and then we had more teleconferences and really took these things very seriously. Um, and then there always had to be a number of workshops in the uh, Dendritic Cell Symposia that Ralph organized, and so Jacques and I learned this from him. Jacques had organized one with him before, and I then organized a couple. Um, and uh, I remember once the Keystone Board actually saying to me, now, Anne, we'll let you have all those workshops, but tell Ralph he can't have 14 talks in one workshop. Um, because Ralph was so keen and so keen to hear the young people present, he would be at every single talk and then he would be at every single poster. And so the, the final thing that Ralph also introduced was he didn't like the fact that um, people went, the big shots would go for dinner and then leave the young people to socialize by themselves. So. At that stage, the posters were introduced uh, at a stage where we could have wine and finger food and, and food that the students of the postdocs could afford. And then the faculty could meet with the students of the postdocs at their posters and after, and there would be great mingling. I have to say, um, I learned so much in running these Kiso meetings, and really, uh, Ralph was actually the soul of what Keystone is about in um, thinking in this way. He always uh, encouraged us to think about women, people in countries that don't get enough exposure, young people. And in fact, I, I have a book of photographs that uh, I put together uh, this year, together with Jacques Bonchereau and a few friends uh, that we presented to um, Claudia uh, Steinman, his, his wife. And in this book has Ralph, um, together with Jacques and I at Keystone, uh, where we were photographs running the meeting. And then there's another picture with Ralph looking at a poster with this young, young student. And a final picture where he's sitting together with this young student and they're both drinking a glass of wine. So uh, to me, um, that was mentoring of the, the best type. And it really fitted with what the spirit of Keystone meetings are about. And that's why I believed that I should take on that kind of attitude and role. I thought it was the right attitude and role um, to uh, help in running Keystone meetings. And then when I was invited first to ad hoc and then on the scientific advisory board, I was very honored because that really meant that I could really help influence the meetings and ensure that they keep that um, uniqueness um, that I've known all these years and that have really got better through the years.